Okay, guys, there I am. Uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. I'm John Jarteiro from, I work for Cloud Solutions and uh, I'm also Azure MVP and I did a bunch of stuff that you guys don't care. And, uh, <laughs> but pretty much, you know, microservice and uh, do DevOps as well, containers a lot. And um, I'm following the you know, Windows Subsystem for Linux from the beginning because I think that's a big change for us and uh, it's helping a lot of the developers. And who doesn't want to have uh, Linux inside your Windows? And now we have not just one Linux, you can pick the, the distro that you want. And now you can see all these, you know, open SUSE or SUSE Linux, you boot on Fedora as well. And I have everything running here. That's amazing. And it's, not, it's out of beta now, Microsoft's providing support from the version that's coming next month. That's for creators and uh, it will be amazing that you guys can say for the enterprise companies, yeah, you can use that. You're going, Microsoft's going to give support. And, um, that's pretty much, you have a common shell screen where you open, you have Linux running there. And it's pretty much 200 megabytes that you have to download when you install that. And it's like 500 megabytes in your disk. And it's just the, the you know, the shell, the, there is no kernel, there is nothing there. Okay, when you install that, that's what you see. You see the different distros here? If you run all together in parallel, you can see that now you can see on the process screen, you can see exactly what's running, and there is no magic. And um, that's how they did it. Probably they have changed a little bit since the, the first version, but it's kind of a provider, and there is no kernel. It's just the Linux, you know, user mode. That's like this 200 megabytes that you install, very lightweight. They just start, do the initialization for your Linux instance, and you have a bash running there. And very soon you probably can have multiple instance or, you know, you, you can have these now on the, on the inside the version, but next month will be available to everybody. And uh, I'm not going into details here, but it's pretty much how they do it. And after that, what they call Pico process is like external process for Windows. Windows say, okay, that's something that's not native. And from there I need like a provider, something to be like an interpreter for this, what they call syscalls here. Yeah, and they get a Linux syscall and they trans translate that in a native Windows syscalls and it works. 100%? No. <laughs> but it's a lot, every, you know, every new release have improvements and improvements. It's running really well now. And why you want to do that? Why I need Linux inside my, lin my Windows? Why I don't have like a virtual machine where I can install Linux? We all have a virtual machine with Linux, but that's different. That's running. That's like the real Linux user mode installed in your laptop, running in parallel of your Windows. Imagine you have Windows in like three or four or five Linux running in parallel, all sharing the same local host, all sharing the same resource. And you can do like development, like say, I don't want to install Ruby or Python or something on my Windows. I can leave that inside my Linux and just we can do some tests if I can manage it to to show here just a second. You can do like thing. See that I have all my Linux open here. I can have different shells. I, it's not open on this screen, but that's fine. But the main thing is, sorry, I can't see my screen here. I can only see that. Um, see, that's my Ubuntu version of my Linux running just inside my Windows. I can do something like that. That's a log, that's a text file that's on my Windows, you know, folder. And I just map with my Linux folder here, and then I can do like a grab and get what's in there. And even better, if I go on this, if I can open this text file here, and I say AWS, let's say Oracle, you know, and, and if you save that, it can do something like that. Let's say, if I can have a tail here, I think I have tail. It can do like tail. And if I go back to my file, it's my file. And if I say that, I should see that coming to 
Yep. That means that we have I not file implemented now. That means that you can have a files in your Windows. You're doing development with VS Code or some you know editor, and then you can have Linux watching that and like compiling, do all the things inside Linux. Then you don't have to install the compilers, the languages inside your Windows anymore. That's that's pretty amazing, and uh, there's a lot of people you know doing different languages using that. And so now you don't have to have a Mac or a Linux just develop. You can. If the company is going to provide, you can do any language now with Windows. And that's, that's really useful. And um, another thing that is coming now out of the box with these versions, um, oh my gosh, it's probably opening all the screen. But. You can see. You can see that I have, from the Windows Store now, I have all the three distros. Ah, sorry, it's probably open on the second screen. But anyway, see if I can open someone here. Yeah, they are pretty much the same, but just like different distros. And um, if you go, let's say, yeah. I think the main thing that I see people using, you know, is like SSH. I have like a Docker install here as well. Then uh, I have a cube, cube control for Kubernetes. You have like Azure CLI. Then why I have to install these multiple times if you can centralize in one environment? And these Linux environment very easy to rebuild. You can just uninstall and install again. You know, you can, um, you can back up. It's a little bit slow, the file system, sometimes. But that's the, some improvements they are promised for this version next month. Um, but think about in your development and uh, how you're going to manage these new things that I was just talking about on my slides. And uh, go back here. Let's see. How are you going to manage? Containers. There are Linux containers running on Windows coming next month as well. How are you guys going to manage Linux containers running inside Windows Server? I think better using Linux. And Linux is coming to Windows Server 2016 next month as well. It's already available on the Windows Insider because we have Windows Server Insider as well now. And next month when Windows Server 2016 will be next version will be released, then you'll be there. You'll be you can install. Uh, we you know, have Windows subsystem for Linux Lab native inside Windows Server. And there's a lot of sysadmins that can use that. Um, have native SSH. Um, everybody knows the new version of SQL Server will be Linux based. And they are releasing first for Linux, then for Windows after that. Then uh, if you look now, have containers for SQL for Linux available and no have for Windows yet. They always update the Linux first. That telling I something that uh, Microsoft is all about the cloud and uh, we can follow that. And how are you going to manage this SQL server running on Linux? I think if you want to keep your desktop, you can use the you know, Windows subsystem for Linux for that as well. And um, PowerShell on Linux, Everyone, anyone try PowerShell on Linux? No one? You can install PowerShell inside Linux. I even have PowerShell installed here inside one of these versions here. And the nice thing of having multiple versions is you can, you, can have, you can play with different things. Maybe you can want to install a new version inside one different distro, not your, your you know, main distro that you use on a daily basis. It's like having four or five Linux running in your laptop at the same time, and you can have different configurations and install different things to play. I think that's pretty amazing. And, um, Linux native tools, uh, a lot of people you know, I use, or the Unix guys, or someone that did, did Linux like 20 years ago, like myself, and uh, I say, well, I want to use my tools again. I, I want to go there and open like, a, you know, if people using VI or, you know, some editors. And uh, why want to VI? Because you're going to remote desktop like containers. There is no editors there. It's all command line. When you're talking about containers or everything in development, you wanna, if you want to you know, connect them in one container for some reason, that would be common line. And that's, that's the main reason to have all these things. And like hybrid, hybrid container cluster as well, 
And all these tools are Linux only, like Helm, and um, how are you going to manage that? And um, I'm open for questions. I just try and have a quick overview, and if someone want to ask me something outside or whatever, thank you.